My name is Vanessa, and I'm growing a cut flower farm in Edgewood, Washington, Zone 8B. In 2017, I started growing cut flowers in my grandfather's garden to aid him in a romantic endeavor. And now, with the help of my partner, we're building a business and a community around the local flower movement in our little corner of the Pacific Northwest. Welcome to Pops. Hey guys, it's V. Welcome back to the farm. All in all, the summit was amazing, and I'm happy to report that all of our plants not only lived through the heat wave, but actually thrived. So it looks like the shade cloth, the deep watering before we left, <laughs> and the two hours of water a day using our irrigation system did the trick. But I'm saving everything that's going on on the farm and all the flower sales we've done, etc., for the next vlog. So let's talk about the summit. All in all, the summit went really, really well. Day one was a little shaky, but day two was a total redemption. On day one, I arrived at Philoli early in the morning and was blown away at how beautiful that place is. Those of you that know me know that I love a good English garden, particularly like the 17th century ones. So being at Philoli, even though it is not an English garden, and it's definitely not 17th century. It's uh, Victorian, if I'm not mistaken, but it draws from a lot of the 17th century and even some of the 18th century design points. And it was like a dream come true. Deborah at Slow Flowers and all of the staff at Philoli did such an amazing job putting this event together. I was absolutely blown away with all of the presentations in addition to obviously the amazing setting. Day one of the Slow Flowers Summit started with an amazing presentation by Max Gill. He did an amazing live demonstration of a really large scale arrangement and it was so beautiful. I gotta be honest with you though, I had a little bit of trouble day one feeling like I fit in. After Max's presentation, the beautiful and wonderful and talented Sue McCleary taught all of us how she does the mechanics of her large scale installations. Now again, I am not a florist. I don't ever plan on ever doing a large scale installation. That sounds like a nightmare to me. I am more of a grower than a designer. And all I could think about was the gardens. That the stems really hold on to. And you'll feel it when you're trying to put everything in the compost. <laughs> the next day, you really got to get in there. It's really reliable. For things that I know perform well. Things that are During Sue's talk, design, I had a hard time focusing. My mind kept things. popping back and forth and between what Sue was saying and the beautiful gardens I had walked through skinny, just that morning. I found myself really curious about the history behind them. Um, you know, everything from like the design choices to the layout of all of them on the property. Who chose what plants? Like all of it, all of it. The history of the plants, like how long some of the trees have been there, things like that. At this point, it was time for lunch and I ended up eating alone and then everyone divided up into groups and did the Philoli flower takeover. Basically, we were all assigned to different places at the venue where we were doing large-scale installations like Sue McCleary had just taught us. I was still feeling very much like I didn't fit in when everyone broke off to go to their assigned rooms uh, or places in the venue to do their floral installation. 
So I snuck away back to the gardens with the camera and took a ton of b-roll, which I made a separate video. If you haven't checked it out, uh, there is one set to music with no talking with all of my footage from the Philoli Gardens. Of course, I will put a link to that video down below in the description. At this point, I had been at Philoli for a little over eight hours and I was having a little trouble processing all the emotions that came with realizing that I didn't really fit here. Normally in this kind of scenario, I'd be questioning myself and my identity and say, what's wrong with me? But there was something about this experience that made my reaction completely different. I was actually feeling really confident about who I am and what I do and what my interests are and where my place and my business's place is in the floral industry. I just wasn't feeling so confident that this was the scene for me. I actually ended up calling my husband and leaving the summit about two or three hours early on day one. Just kind of needed some time to process. And my husband, farm husband, uh, bless him so much. He was so good. I know he was wondering if I was going to go back for day two, but there was never any doubt in my mind that I was definitely going back for day two. I walked into day two kind of a different person. I was completely confident in who I was and the fact that I was different from everyone else there, again, sorry, airplane, didn't bother me at all. I was absolutely determined to get the most out of the day and not let my social interactions or possible lack thereof impact my ability to learn and grow while I was at day two. Let me tell you guys, a little bit of confidence goes such a long way. At the start of day two, Sue McCleary was back, this time to give the keynote speech of the summit. I truly think that flowers are, um, the medium is an art medium. Um, I want the public uh, to view floristry in a better way, to be more curious about it. So that's like another one of my, my threads, my driving motivation. And this is where everything really turned around for me. I grabbed a front row seat. I was ready to take notes. I was a little bit caffeinated and completely engaged. And it's funny because Sue joked about in her talk about momming the audience, but I know for a fact what she had to say was exactly what I needed to hear. A limiting belief is uh, a damaging belief that we hold about our abilities or potential that can prevent us from pursuing something that we really want or need. Sue's talk centered around getting rid of your limiting self-belief. You know, like the one I had four days before we left when I was like, oh, I could never go to the Slow Flower Summit. Sue talked about all the things that you would achieve if you let go of your self-limiting beliefs. And my mind started to go. Sue basically gave everyone in the audience permission, for lack of a better word, to examine who they really are, be comfortable with it, not apologize for it, examine what they really want, throw what everyone says out the window, and go for it. The rest of day two was kind of a blur because I was just having such this rise, this redemption moment. Sue validated everything I had been feeling from day one, completely and told me to run with it. She said, you're not wrong. It's totally okay that you're nerding out over gardens and everyone else is telling you that you should get in on the floral design, even though you know it's not what you're passionate about. It's okay to be a grower and not have a huge farm. And let me tell you that ever since we got back from the summit, I feel like a slightly different person. I've never in my life felt so confident in what I was doing, the direction I was going, the fact that I don't fit in, it doesn't bother me. And it doesn't make what I do or what I'm passionate about any less valuable. If anything, it makes it more valuable. Having unique passions enables you to do unique things when you follow them. It's asking you to bring something new into the world, something that's unique to you. So that was my experience at the Slow Flower Summit. There were way more speakers that I could talk about, way more presentations, but I think part of the reason you guys watch our channel is really to see what it's like to do what we do through our eyes. And so that was my experience. Before we left California, we did stop somewhere really, really cool. Farm husband put together a morning for us right before we had to hop on our plane to head back to Seattle. And he nailed it. He knows me so well, he took me to the Conservatory of Flowers in Golden Gate Park. 
which was right up my alley and I loved every minute of it. For those of you that don't know, the Conservatory of Flowers in Golden Gate Park is a huge Victorian glass house. Unbelievable. Uh, and it houses an incredible collection of species. By far for me, the highlight was the lily pads. Oh, it's just so much old school Victorian awesomeness. That was it. It was an incredible trip. I had an amazing time. I know farm husband had an amazing time. He rented a sports car. So while I was out traipsing through the gardens in Filoli, he was out driving around in the South San Francisco Hills, living his absolute best life. But I am going to leave it here. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified of when our next video drops. Next week, there is no vlog coming because it is time to do the July farm tour. Thanks for watching.